It's 9.50 p.m. October 12th, 12, excuse me, 2021. And the lion is in the car. Oh, I wish I could be like my dad. He was, he was a lion. <laughs> Golden Gloves boxer, best track coach ever, NCAA champion. He could, he was skinny because he was malnourished, malnourished as a child, but he could throw a football 80 yards and kick it 80 yards. So he was quite the BMOC on, on, at Stanford, but he was such great father, great father. Anyway, I'm going to be, let me see if I'm filming here. Yep. <laughs> anyway, I had a good workout, man. Arr! Feels good to just be getting stronger and stronger. So Gideon's Army tomorrow morning. So what better place to film than an In-N-Out Burger? I remember filming right, af right after the inauguration and I was laughing so much, I was, I just was really surprised anybody took it seriously, but I guess some people, some people did. So I had my leather coat and I remember I had 105,000 views in like two weeks, trucks. And, uh, oh, shnikes, I got a multi-desk here. Okay, I know what I'm getting. I'm gonna, I'm on a, kind of take watching my P's and Q's here. Okay. Hello there. Hi, how are you? I'm doing really great, thanks. Good to hear. Hey, uh, I'd like a double, double animal style. And if I could have some extra sauce and double onions. Sorry, what was that? Extra. Double. Extra sauce and double double onions. Sorry, I'm like a really loud part. It just popped mine. I couldn't hear anything okay. you said. You know, extra sauce. You guys put sauce on the burgers, right? Like a sauce. Yes, I got the extra sauce and just sorry. Double onions. Double onion. Okay. <laughs> okay, and and that's it. Thanks. All right, four eighty-seven at your first window. Thank you very much. Thank you. I think maybe my talk in Spanish occasionally is, <laughs> I don't know what it is. <clears throat> I just worked out, so my blood's probably in my uh, biceps and triceps. <laughs> it was an upper body workout, but it feels good to be getting stronger. And I, I take Dr. Christopher's stuff, bone and tissue, and it's just like amazing how it just uh, heals, heals you. Dr. Christopher is just up there in Springville. He's probably one of the number one herbal guys that ever existed, <clears throat> besides the Native Americans, because those guys, I mean, you can study bone set. If you set the bone wrong, you're kind of in trouble, because bone set can heal a broken bone in like two or three days, so you have to be super skilled. It's kind of, they kind of keep it, you know, on the down low, because most Western medicine is uh, muy malo, no bueno. So, sorry. But I'm excited because tomorrow morning, Jerry, I don't know if I'm going to sleep that much tonight. So much is coming off. Now, people, on Telegram, I'm Mana Truth Channel, and I put really good stuff up there, like Bad Company and uh, a video by Charlie, que está viviendo en México, y es excelente porque explica lo que sucedió primeramente en Saudi Arabia, Después uh, Israel, también en el Vaticano. I was thinking about the Vatican. Hey, kid by the side of the road. We love Juan, and we're going to pray for Juan tomorrow morning. And I love the way Gideon's army opens up with that prayer. And trying to do my homework, you know, cramming at the last minute. I saw Susan in there, and there's four women that show up before it even starts. And then pretty soon you see Graceful and Trippy and Matthew Holder and Jamie and... White Madea, I think. I mean, everybody shows up. So I really enjoyed it. And Jerry is indefatigable, to use a big word there. The guy is always on. <laughs> so I, I, I'm going to focus and be there tomorrow morning, Jerry. He might not watch this, but he's probably catching some Zs. And Matthew, Matthew H, whatever. Matthew, shout out to you. Shout out to everybody in Gideon's Army, to all my subs. So I hope some of the subs, I know it's not much of a warning but I was talking to Susan Kane about multitasking and so the fact that I'm driving over to Hamburg got to the, by the side road and talking about um, Gideon's Army tomorrow morning and I really love the little prayer video with Juan 
uh, once again, my last video about 107, people, you shouldn't get up tight. Si hablo español y después inglés. It's a good way to learn. And, oh my gosh, I think Lynn, Lynn va a estar mañana. Lynn is one of the smartest, not the smartest woman I've ever met in my life. She speaks fluent Spanish. She's better than me, and she speaks other languages. Uh, she's been in charge of more than 100,000 people, and she was in charge of a huge firm, HR, during 9-11. So I wouldn't miss it just for Lynn uh, and Jerry. So I'm going to do my best to not talk too much. And... <laughs> But I am going to sing a song. I cleared it with Jerry. I got a little song. Now, everybody's voice, like in Jimbo and, and all those guys have great voices. But mine's better than Field McConnell's voice. I'll bet on that. I'll bet a milkshake that my voice is better than Field McConnell's. Anyway, so get by the side of the road. Milan. Donald. El Donaldo. Oh, my gosh. Got this one. And then Juan. I think there's different Juans kind of sent me this as a car copy, which is smart, because the other one, who knows who's who, you know, you have your intuitions, but Juan 07's a great guy. I think, you know, I think I kind of resonate with Juan 07 because even though he's a youngster, he understands a lot of stuff. Like Larry Abraham, I've been like trying to find a book by Larry Abraham, and I couldn't find it. But a lot of people don't know, if you kind of want to know about the bad guys, here's the other side, Carl in London, financed by some high-end guys, wrote the 10 Planks of the Communist Manifesto. And so you should know the 10 Planks of the Commie Manifesto so you know what's going on with the enemy. Okay, I think I'll just put that stuff there. Let's see what else I got. Chess, Fundamentals by Raul Cavablanca. Makes me think about when Juan's talking about Casablanca. Oh, like, okay, we'll talk about religion here. I'm gonna, May God help me be in the right mode tomorrow because I just love to study widely. Martin Luther, you know, it's just pretty interesting when he, uh, oh my gosh, I gotta move up. Drive the truck, not hit it. Okay. This is multitasking. Susan Kane, I hope you're proud of me for multitasking. I have a feeling you're gonna be there in the morning. Oh my gosh, I better get out some dinero. The good thing when you order one thing and you skip the fries and everything else, you, uh, you can keep it under five bucks for a hamburger. And you drink some water. You skip the animal style fries, which are pretty delish. Some, they're almost always hot, but the other day they, they were cold. Hey, does Brandon work here anymore? You know that really good looking black guy, Brandon? Brandon? Is he, he does, but he's not working tonight. He is so funny, isn't he's he? He's awesome, isn't he? <laughs> he's hilarious. You're like, yeah, I love him. He's great. How about Brigham? Brigham? Yes, he still works here too. Brigham? Okay. Oh, there's my man. Okay. Um, and I just want to double check that we have this correct. We have the double, double animal style with extra spread, extra regular onions, but none of the grilled onions. Okay, okay. Cause you, could I get grilled onions with no extra yeah. cost? You want the regular onions and the grilled onions? Yeah, I do. Okay, perfect. I'm single, so I can eat all the onions I want. Yeah, you got it. <laughs> I do got it. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. So, one... Okay. Is that five bucks for a great hamburger with onions and everything? I'm stoked. <laughs> so say hi to Brandon and Brigham from the guy with long hair. And did you want your receipt today your change? Sure, sure, because it might have lucky numbers on it. Like 17 and stuff like that. Okay. Thank you. Is that Great. Thanks a million. Thank you. Have a good one. Thanks. Not too crowded, but hey, you know, it just feels good to be, you know, kind of dedicated to work out at nine o'clock at night. Kiores. And even Grand Funk Railroad, closer. Okay, why am I listening to that song? Because of Charlie once again. It'll be so great someday when I get together with Dubstep or, and these, or people that I know and make videos without having to worry about uh, the violations. Because I love video. I used to make them on my own. And uh, that's, I'm going to listen to that. In fact, the thing is it's on my iPhone, so if I turn that on, then this turns off. Okay, so back to books. Oh, okay. Um, Disinformatia. Disinformation. Active measures in Soviet strategy. That's a good book. Now, I want to talk about this book here. Okay. 
Okay, foundations pay the way. I remember when I was at, oh my gosh, Schneikes already, I got, I kind of wish the line was longer. Foundations, I remember looking at the Rockefeller Foundation and said no giving to churches. Okay, here we go. Already, ready, to, oh my gosh. Okay, here, I gotta move my leather coat. I don't wanna get it too messed up. Okay. Thank you very Thank much. You. Have a great night. Thanks. This is called short and video time because I, I, you know, I, a lot of times I don't really eat until later in the day. I do take my super stuff. I'll let you. Okay, so Juan knows Larry Abrams, okay, who wrote, he was the co author with Gary Allen of uh, None Dare Call a Conspiracy, which was recommended by Isaac Jeff Benson was president of the Mormon Church back in the day when I went to Harvard and I gave my testimony about the Constitution and Benson and Skousen and Mitt Romney who was my stake president didn't like it so the bottom line in different wards and different um, congregations you can't judge you know somebody by just what church they go to for instance you know Mitt Romney being my stake president now he's supposedly the senator of Utah and then remember Harry Reid Mormon so it depends. Cleon Scouser was a Mormon. I got to talk about Cleon, then I'm going to pound this food, man. I tell you, I'm going to pound it. Okay? Because that one time I shot the video with somebody. Uh, okay, so the naked capitalist. I wish I had a camera person, but I don't. It's, it's okay. I've got a multitasking Susan Kane. Got it? So naked capitalist. Okay, here, yeah, I'll do this. Anyway, Cleon. Look at this, Cleon Scouser. Um, w. Cleon Scouser is the author of the well-known book, The Naked Communist, which reached the national bestseller list in 1961. Okay, um, Now he has produced the companion volume, The Naked Capitalist. His background includes 16 years with the FBI, four years as the chief of police in Salt Lake City, 10 years as editorial director of the national nation's leading police management law, magazine, Law and & Order, and seven years as university professor. Educated in the United States, Canada, and Mexico. I've been to his hometown up in, uh, I think it's Alberta. He entered the FBI in 1935 until in 1951. He's accepted a position with BYU, Chief of Police in Salt Lake City. So the thing with, with Cleon, I got to work with him. He's a great, great teacher, okay? And this book, you know, Juan, when he drives past, um, he drives up to the Clinton Library, and Juan, you know, Juan, I think he's really funny. Watch, you know... Whenever he goes on a show, he chuckles first to put you in a good mood. And then he hits it hard, but he, he knows the parameters to stay in. He's extremely brilliant. That's my assessment of him. And I'm, that's my assessment. But in this book, Naked Capitalist, okay, Joseph McCarthy. Okay, that guy's a hero. That's a good guy. Dean Ackerson, bad guy. Owen Lattimore, bad guy. Harry Hopkins. Okay, George Marshall, if that's the Marshall... Oh no, there's uh, there's two guys. Okay, no, MacArthur's the good guy. Marshall, no bueno. Okay, Philip Jessup, Dean Rusk, no bueno. Dwight, I think Dwight's no bueno. Robert Hutchins, McGeorge Bundy. Okay, believe it or not, this guy came to speak at Harvard Business School when I was there. So that was pretty interesting to have a guy from the book, no bueno, come and speak to us at Harvard. Henry Ford ended up being kind of no bueno. Paul Hoffman, Nixon, Nelson Rockefeller, Henry Cabot Lodge, the Cabots and the Lodges. Oh, look at these guys. Oh, no bueno, guys. So, the thing about the Naked Capitalist is great is it has pictures and explains stuff. Just like Juan's, Juan talked about Larry Abrams. Now, labor, I never met those guys, but I did work with Cleon. But uh, Juan knew Larry Abrams. So, 1415, okay. Let's see. Thanks, in and out burger. Oh, yeah, I'm gonna eat my food. So I have some more books. We'll go for it real quick. Let's see, we got America's Retreat from Victory. Senator Joseph R. McCarthy. See, he was in the book. He exposed communism in the 50s and they just nailed him. Then Cleon, you know, um, Glenn Beck picked up on that book and stuff, but Cleon had this book way before that Glenn Beck stuff. 5,000 year leap. And then this book here is theology. The thing is, I, I'm... I'm probably more into theology than politics. I am calling an election, and the first part of it, this book, 
says, let's see. There's a clash between a devil who is the God of this world and Jesus Christ, who is the savior of the world. In reality, every man on earth is involved in this war for there can be no neutrals. And that's pretty darn good. First chapter, to be called and elected, is from the Bible, 2 Peter 1.10. Brethren, give diligence to make your calling and election sure, for if you do this, do these things, ye shall never fall. Okay. You know, you, a lot of times you feel unworthy, but you just never stop. That feeling of guilt is so that you can repent of your sins and keep going, okay? And the conscience, same with the conscience. You know when you're going against your conscience. I know it. One time I tried to be perfect for like four hours on my mission in Argentina and I gave up. You know, it was too stressful. So we're sinners. But thanks to, he to Heavenly Father's Son, Jesus Christ, who came here, um, we can be forgiven of our sins and then live with him and our loved ones and our loved pets again because pets resurrect. Okay, Prophecy in Modern Times by Cleon Skousen. So I, I admire Cleon Skousen. He's kind of like a Juan O. Saban to me in a lot of ways. Now, Juan, you know, I don't think grew up Momo. I don't think, but Juan is, I'm sure, aware of that huge religion, okay? I'm going to say this real quick, and then i got to eat my burger and get ready. Even though I'll be surfing that, and I'll have trouble sleeping. But I'm going to be on Jerry Foley on time tomorrow on Gideon's Army. So go there and watch it, folks. Gideon's Army... 6 a.m. Utah time. <clears throat> so it's on in eight hours. What timing, Jerry? But it's okay. Be there or be square. Uh, yeah, people don't know. <clears throat> when Brigham Young came out here, <clears throat> excuse me, Las Vegas is a Mormon settlement. San Francisco, Yerba Buena, interesting name, is a Mormon settlement. You know, back in the 1800s, after the gold rush and right around the gold rush or right before it, Sam Brannan, there's a street named after him, owned one-fifth, 20% of San Francisco. So, and I grew up, grew up Mormon, went on a Mormon mission. And then as I started reading scouts and I started seeing things, I thought, you know what? It's about true principles. It's not about personalities and it is about the constitution. So if you see somebody like Harry Reid starting to go away from the constitution, and you've got a conflict between Mormons. Ammon Bundy, the Bundy family, and Harry Reid, who's no bueno. Ammon Bundy is, I think, one of the best patriots of this generation and his whole family. They, they, you know, they were fighting for their ranching rights, the last ones. They spent time in prison, biblical with Ammon Bundy. God bless those great, 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 great ranchers. I remember I was in San Francisco when that was going on. And, oh man, intense. I almost went up there and stood the ground, but it ended up being pretty pretty chaotic and stuff. And there's some infiltration there. So the story of Ammon in the Book of Mormon is unmissable. So tomorrow I'll pray for me and, and Lynn. I'm gonna say a prayer and I'm just gonna keep it, you know, to what Jerry intends it to be. Or what God intends it to be. But, for instance, like Cleon Scouts is one of my favorite authors. He wrote a book called The First 2,000 Years. The First 2,000 Years of the Bible. And in that, he talks about giants. And, you know, I've talked to ranchers here. They've found corpses that are 10 feet in the coffin. And so once you know these things, it's like you just can't limit yourself to a book that, you know, it... Uh, people picked out under King James. And then the Council of Nicaea, man, I never, would never go with those guys. Council of Nicaea? They come up with a church that that uh, says you need to be celibate? I'm a little bit worried about Juan because he took Jim Caviezel to Texas and took him to a monastery. And the first part of the Bible, Juan says, multiply and replenish the earth. J JK Juan, I love Juan so much. And frankly, I don't have to talk to him too much because I think we have the same boss directing the show. And I'm not talking about an earthly boss. Juan is incredible. Jerry loves him. I love him. We love him. And the people that are going to be in the show tomorrow love him. God bless you, Juan O'Saban. God bless you, Jerry Foley. Going to pound some meat, get the protein in the biceps and triceps. 
and be ready for Gideon's army and the manana. God bless the patriots. God save the children. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen.